Welcome to another video from TD Sheridan Lab. Previously, I made a video on how you can back up your Office 365 environment to a Synology NAS. But what if you still have other on-prem servers you're already backing up with Veeam? Well, today I'm going to go through the process of setting up Veeam backup for Office 365 and show you some of the differences. Stay tuned. As you can see, I already got Veeam Backup and Replication installed on this computer, so let's install the Office 365 components. This is the install file for everything. If you need to install the server piece, the console, etc. Unlike traditionally when you install the Veeam console on your desktop, it by default it does not install the explorers. So if you are installing the console for Office 365 on your you know, work computer, then once the console is installed, then you'll have to install these separately. That's also under the assumption that you don't already have the Veeam backup and replication console installed on that computer. If you have that console installed, then you don't need to install the Explorer for Exchange or Explorer for SharePoint. It's the same thing, it's just not incorporated into the main installer like Veeam backup and replication. So let's go run this file and we have to install .NET. So I will be right back as I install .NET. Alrighty, now that .NET 4.7.2 is installed, let's try this again. First screen of the install, nothing surprising there. Got some end user agreements. And this is the one thing I'm gonna call out. I would say server is the server software piece of it, so you're gonna have to install that. Then these two are just management consoles, so I, I'm going to install them on the server. If you were to install the console on your local computer, then you would just go in here and do that so you don't install the server software on your local computer. But I need to install a server, so I'm going to re-enable that. Then next. So since this is running on a, technically a Lenovo Tiny right now in my demo environment, uh, yeah, I agree it does not meet the minimum requirements. They're not crazy by any means, but it's going to be, going to be cutting it close. So for this demo environment, it's fine. Um, if you see this in production, go reevaluate the resources you have assigned on it. Generally with Veeam, a decent starting point is four cores and about 12 to 16 gigs of RAM. I know the minimums are around 8, but when you get to 12 and 16, it definitely helps on performance and concurrent processes running. As this install goes, you can see some icons popping up over here, and it is done. We can close that. Now let's open up this first one. And as you can see here, it's saying connect to localhost. Again, if you're installing the console on your local machine, change this to the IP address or name of your backup server to be able to log into it. Your you know, AD credentials or whatever credentials that you're using has to be a local admin on the backup server. So just keep those few things in mind there. The community edition can protect up to 10 users and a terabyte of SharePoint data. Two users, so this is fine. Obviously, if you're doing it company-wide, gauge your user base. You know, I'm nine times out of 10. If you have a deployment that warrants buying Veeam backup and replication to back up those virtual machines, you probably have more than 10 users. Pricing-wise, I know you can get it down to pretty close to a dollar a user if you commit to like a three-year term. So it, it is relatively inexpensive to tack this on to your existing Veeam subscription or purchase. But for now, I'm going to click no. When you first open it up, you get brought into this screen. So let's go and review the other ones. Obviously, right now, I don't have any Office 365 tenants populated in here. So it makes sense that this is blank. If we go under backup infrastructure this is where it can get a little bit more complex you have the default backup repository and you have the default backup proxy and in veeam proxies do all the actual backup 
processing. It's a little confusing with some of their other terminologies, but proxies do all the work in Veeam. Repositories are where they're stored. By default, it set a three-year retention policy and an item level retention. This is the original version that came out with Veeam Backup for Office 365 back in the day. Now there is a snapshot based retention which is similar to when you're processing uh, virtual machines. Basically it takes a snapshot of your Office 365 environment, processes it all, and then based on the retention policy, after it's done, it deletes it all um, and then just goes forward. So this is new in version 3. It's supposed to be more efficient. Whichever one works for you, this one is the classic tried and true method. And then with your retention policy, you can set it up for however long you want to keep those items. So keep for forever, 25 years, etc. This is set at a repository level. So keep that in mind with your planning. If you got to shear some of your users or create multiple jobs where if you have a department or departments that only you only care about their data for three years that's a job and then if you have like the C-level employees they want to keep forever that would be a second job to a different repository so I am going to go and create a new repository here we'll just call this snapshot ideally this would be on a bigger drive that's not the OS but um, Again, this is just a demo environment, and since I don't have any other virtual machines that I'm running right now at home, I'm going to continue to use the Synology solution I made in a previous video. If I was still running a bunch of virtual machines and still running Veeam at home, then yeah, I'd be using this all day long because I'm a huge Veeam advocate. So, uh, we'll say, let's just say keep for seven years line it up with some kind of standard policies seven years is mainly how long companies have to hold financial data so kind of tying the rest of your backups to that would kind of cover your butt in any law legal or lawsuit uh, type deal so alrighty and with the retention policy you can skew what time of day when it hits that point to do it in this case I'm just leaving it here but if you have some other time based stuff when things get kind of truncated at the office you could adjust it to make it all line up. Hit finish. This backup proxy is fine. Alright let's add the Office 365 tenant. So I'll click on add organization and I want to grab everything you can uh, be a little bit more granular if you only want their mailbox. This will pick up anything that runs on SharePoint. So even though this only calls out OneDrive and SharePoint, if you're using Teams or Project Online, then since that's all based off of SharePoint, it will pick up those extra items as well. And we are in default region because of laws. Um, these other four are slightly different for each one. Another new feature of version 3 here is the modern authentication. So if you have the two-factor authentication turned on for your service account that's going to be running this job, you can set up an app password to uh, have this go through this way instead of just using the traditional username and password. Part of this wizard here is going to grant the user account impersonation rights to be able to impersonate other people's mailboxes to back them up. If you need to configure the app password, you just go into security and privacy and then click on manage app passwords and go from there. And then let's go and configure the application ID and secret piece as well. Alright, to configure the application ID piece, we got to go into basically Azure AD and I'll include a link to the how to piece in Veeam's documentation for that but at the high level you go and do an app registration and set it up you can name whoever you want um, and then basically you update the API to allow Microsoft Graph to come in and read information and then you create a uh, 
client secret, and then that's the stuff that we put into Office 365. Alrighty, looks like we got an error, and let's figure this out. Like in my case, it was a simple uh, mistake here. For the permissions, I had only the delegated ones for these two, and it had to be an application permission. So just double check your permissions when you're configuring this uh, authentication method, but simple fix. If we look here, got past graph, it's connecting. So right now, these two are standard because you're signing to an account that most likely does not have the impersonation role or uh, that kind of management piece. So right now it is going through and basically enabling these stuff as it goes here. So it's not the end of the world on that one. Basically, if this fails out for any reason, you will not be able to continue. And as you can see, it finished everything up. And then the things that it flagged there, it just enabled right there with green check. So we can click finish. And now it is there. Alrighty. One nice thing about version 3 is you can rename these organizations. So if you have a bunch in there, like you're a service provider, then yeah, it gets a little compact if you just have one it really doesn't matter but let's clean it up a little bit perfect so now more importantly than naming let's create a backup job so you click next give it a name just like anything else description snapshot Based backup. Generally, when you backup stuff like an email server, you want everything. So I'm going to be lazy and click everything. If there is things you want to exclude, basically you can go through and exclude them. Give it a moment to load, but uh, yeah, mainly the only things you make excluded would be like the discovery search mailbox since you kind of have zero control over that um, if there's a uh, SharePoint site you don't care about or you know it takes up a ton of space and you don't care if you lose it like it's hosting ISO images or something like that um, you can exclude it a test site is exactly that. It's a test site, so let's exclude it. Then choose your backup repository. If you only have one, then it pre-populates for you, but if you have two, it's a drop-down. Same with proxies. So, And you can run it daily, or you can change it to periodically, like every four hours, every two hours, whatever works best for your, your organization. What I would suggest is configuring this termination window sometimes especially if you're using other third-party tools to migrate or move stuff around like ShareGate sometimes when Veeam runs and that runs they conflict so one of the backup periods will like hold one of the or hold up the backup so if you can if you can figure a window where it automatically terminates it if there is something that gets in the way so Veeam doesn't stop correctly and then start again at the next iteration this will force that to happen in a worst case scenario so that's just my recommendation you can put it any time on that front and then I want this to back up now so start the job when I click create so as you can see it is running here if we click on it you can see it see the status And as this loads, I will discuss licensing a little bit here. So Veeam is licensed on a per user basis. So, uh, but on the things that are arguably free, uh, like in this case, the info and sales mailboxes there, those are shared mailboxes. So basically as long as there's a user 
that has a license that can access those free resources, they get backed up without consuming an extra Veeam license. So, and all the stuff that is this is backing up right now, this would consume one Veeam license because it's all just underneath my account. As you can see, it's cruising right, ar right along, backing up my email and SharePoint and OneDrive for Business and all that fun stuff. Well, that goes the next piece of this that is just general, we'll say setup that you probably want to do is notifications. Obviously, clicking on that, you can say who it's from, where it's going, give you an email on if it's, you know, based off of your policies, if you want the daily success email or if you just want an email when there's a problem, set it up, you know, review it as you want. Junk mail and then sync issues and all that stuff is excluded because that's kind of pointless stuff. But if you wanted to exclude drafts or deleted items from it, you could as well. So the option to allow other users to recover their own stuff. So if other users log into a computer with the console on, sign in as them, they can connect up and recover their own items to their mailbox. This does require a SSL certificate for it to function on the server, so it is an extra setup. This is generally only used by the service providers, so anyone that's doing Cloud Connect hosting would set this up, so then if the client is paying for the service provider to you know, hold a backup copy in the cloud of all their servers, then they could also pay to have them back up their Office 365 environment, and then if they wanted to, they could have them self-service their own emails so flip back here and this has already backed everything up so this took a whole three minutes and 40 seconds to download it all and whatever I set two or four hours from now it'll go through and grab the changes and we'll be good to go but so that is Veeam backup for Office 365 in a nutshell so if you like this video please subscribe and click the notification bell also, you can follow us at our website at tdsheridanlab.com and on social media on Facebook and Twitter at tdsheridanlab. Otherwise, feel free to leave comments, agree, disagree, light me up if I'm wrong, correct me where I'm wrong, comment, all that fun stuff, like reaching out to you guys. So look forward to more videos in the future.